Good afternoon, Colorado Mesa University, and welcome back to the newest season of Crossing the Line. I am your host, Matt Entrican, and with me is Sean Cinnabon Sullivan. <laughs> Sean, how you doing, my man? I'm doing great. It is great to be back for another great season of Cross the Line. Mm. I'm ready to just dive right into it. Mm. It's going to be greater and better than ever. All right, and with that, Sean, I have just one question for you. Our first topic of the day, I'm going to lead it off with a little question for you. What is the one thing that Marlon Brando and Los Angeles Rams have in common? They could have been contenders. Okay. Okay, tell me what you think, man. Who is the top contender to dethrone the Kansas City Chiefs and T Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Well, you said it right there. It's Los Angeles Rams simply because they finally got the missing piece to put it all together. That's Mr. Matthew Stafford. And I think we can all agree it's nice to have already a feel-good moment here in week one in the NFL with Matthew Stafford finally being on a team that can give him that elusive ring he hasn't been able to get his whole entire career. Matthew Stafford had a fantastic first game, throwing bombs off the start, just 70, 50-yard touchdowns right off in the first half. Also, they have a fantastic defense because, as we know, the two most potent offenses in the league. You can definitely make a case for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs. And who better but Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey in crew to stop and slow them down. You have the high-flying offense of Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, and Robert Woods. You have the stellar defense of the best defensive player in the league. And I think we can easily make a case. One of the best defensive players of all time in Aaron Donald. Jalen Ramsey has doing, been doing his thing ever since he's been in Los Angeles Rams. Have been with that elusive piece, that attitude that they really need to slow down the Tampa Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The one thing, if I could be nitpicking a little bit with Los Angeles Rams, is the running game. Losing Cam Akers to that torn Achilles right off the bat is going to hurt them a little bit. But I think with Daryl Henderson, he got a touchdown last week. I think he can maybe if he steps up a little bit more pieces together, and if you're a Rams fan out there, I'd be excited because if there's any team that can beat Tampa Bay and Kansas City, it's you guys. All right, all right, all right, all right, Sean. I'm going to have to have you slow down a little bit, rain in the stallions, okay? Because let me tell you something. I understand why you're excited about Los Angeles Rams. There's a lot to be excited about. I mean, i got to admit, the dynamic between Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford reminds me a lot of what Willie the Orca Whale and uh, the ocean looked like when Will Free Willie was finally released into freedom into the ocean. I mean, it looks beautiful. He just wants to go. Okay, but I will say this. Matthew Stafford doesn't change. He's 33 years old. He's an old man. 0-3 in the playoffs. Never won a playoff game. And you think he's going to go for a long run in the playoffs? I just don't see it, Sean. I don't see it. He didn't look 33 the other day, I'll say that. His arm looked lively <laughs> as ever. Still has the spin on it. He can still sling with the best of them. And also, they're not asking him to be Lamar Jackson dual threat or anything like that. He's mobile. He scored a touchdown off of bootleg. He can get out of the pocket. It's better than what Ben Roethlisberger and Tom Brady can do. When was last time you've seen Tom Brady run a bootleg? I don't think, I'm he's sure he has. But he doesn't, doesn't need to run a bootleg. Well, exactly. Matthew Stafford doesn't need to run a bootleg <laughs> because he can sling across the field throwing no looks left and right. Uh, it's only week one, you know, he doesn't got, who knows how much juice he has in the arm. He's not used to playing 17, 18, 19, 20 games. So, and we know Tom Brady is, is no rule. He is the exception to the rule. Tom versus time, Tom will beat time. And it's time <laughs> for you to tell me who you think can dethrone the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Kansas City Chiefs. All right, Sean, all right, Sean. Let me tell you, my top contender to dethrone Kansas City Chiefs and or Tampa Bay Buccaneers is the Cleveland Browns. That's right. I said there's a lot of teams that I think are hungry in the NFL right now. Saints are hungry. Cowboys are hungry. But the team that I'm going to go, I, I, that they're hungry. They're hungry. Don't sleep on the Cowboys. That's, a, that's another topic for another day. But Cleveland Browns. Now that is a well-rounded team. You've got the Heisman, the Heisman winner in Baker Mayfield late leading your team. He's getting better all the time. You've got a, you've got Great offensive line, great defense. You've got all the parts. They're all firing away. And you were just a pass interference. Or, sorry, that was a different game. And you were just one little thing away uh, from taking down the Kansas City Chiefs in week one, arguably the best team in the world. There's a lot to love about the Cleveland Browns, right? There's a lot to love, but there's one main issue that I see with the Cleveland Browns, especially in week one, and that's they have an L. The Rams <laughs> got a win. They did it when they could. The Rams got their win. Browns didn't win. So, you know. I wouldn't say I'm sounding the alarms yet with the Cleveland Browns oh. or anything like that, but there are many teams in the NFL that it is time to sound the alarm for. And Matt, I asked that to you. After mm. this week one, this crazy week one, there's a couple teams that really underperformed. So Matt, who are you sounding the alarm for? Ah, 
Well, Sean, let me tell you, it is time to ding, ding, sound the alarm for the Green Bay Packers. That's right, I said it. Aaron Rodgers has done too much damage, damage this year to his team, to his reputation, and to his, all of his relationships. That is not going to have a significant effect on his team, okay? And then we saw it on Sunday. I mean, really, 38-3. to 3. MVP, is that the best you could muster? Is that the best you could do? Really? No. When you... Do what Aaron Rodgers have done, and you take shots at your organization, and you take shots at your teammates, and you like threaten retirement. That is not the voice you want to hear from your quarterback, the leader of your team. I don't, I don't see how anybody can have a very great opinion and, and much less want to follow this man. Uh, that's a good point, but as let's go, take it back to a couple years ago. They lose around 2012, 2013 time. Aaron Rodgers himself, the Packers up to a very slow start. I think they went like 0-5 or 1-4 in their first five weeks. And then he had one uh, very famous press conference where he said a simple phrase, or spelled out a simple phrase, I should say, <laughs> R-E-L-A-X, relax. And if I'm a Packers fan, I'm relaxing. There, like you were saying, there was a lot, you can't deny, there was a lot of turno turmoil. There was a lot of chaos in this offseason for the Green Bay Packers. But... I'm not sounding alarms off the Green Bay Packers as much as I am sounding off the alarms for the Tennessee Titans. Playoffs, two years in a row. A lot of people are saying they're a couple pieces away. You have Derrick Henry plugging along, stiff arm people, throwing Josh Norman into the stands. We all love to see that. We can't deny that. But you guys get demolished 38-13 to to the Arizona Cardinals. A very solid Arizona Cardinals teams. We can't deny that. <laughs> but... Only had 300 yards of total offense. That's not what we like to see. Derrick Henry himself only had 58 yards of total offense. Taylor Rowan, their star left tackle, Pro Bowl left tackle, coming off an ACL injury, gets destroyed week one, gives up five sacks to Chandler Jones. I don't even think J.J. Watt had any sacks because he didn't need to because Chandler Jones is getting there so fast and smacking Ryan Tannehill square in the mouth. And the biggest problem for me and why I'm selling alarms off so much with the Tennessee Titans is because what Vrabel, Mike Vrabel, head coach Mike Vrabel, said, after his press conference where he was being very harsh and very critical of his teams, especially to new free agency acquisition of Julio Jones. Had a little bit of a goofy penalty. The anger's there, the passion is there. You're, getting, you're losing 38 to 13, not saying it's an excuse, but I don't necessarily know if you want to be this divisive in the locker room week one off a very solid team with a very high ceiling to a new superstar player that you have week one. Well. I'm not even going to refute that one. I also don't think the Tennessee Titans are going to go anywhere. I mean, Ryan Tannehill, really, really. I mean, I think they were lucky to as get as far as they have in the past couple years. So I personally do not believe in uh, Tennessee Titans either. I would say I don't, dis I don't, I don't think they're going to flop and have a horrible season. I think they can piece it together. As we all know, Derrick Henry gets better as the season progressive. But if you want to have a good playoff seating, which you know to beat – teams like Cleveland to beat teams like Kansas City in the playoffs. You need that home field advantage, so you got to stop getting these wins early. So get Derrick Henry churning early, and hopefully they can swing things around, much like they do have an easy division, similar to the Green Bay Packers. The NFC North, not a fantastic division. AFC South, really bad division. So maybe they can piece it together. I guess we'll wait and see now, won't we? Seems like Tennessee Titans might be in need of a little something extra. A little hydration. A little hydration. We're on this little debate off camera. Best drink for after a game, Gatorade. Matt, what are your best Gatorade flavors? Well, I just want to get it, make it clear that it is not my favorite post-game drink. There are other post-game drinks that I do prefer. I'm not going to go into the specifics on that one, but you may have a hunch. Anyway, <laughs> what I'm going to say here, the best Gatorade flavor is light blue, Arctic Blitz, that's right. It sounds just like a waterfall of electrolytes as it coming off my tongue. It's just a beautiful name, and it makes you want to just mm, drink about a gallon of it. Now, and I will say, I'm also going to prove this point by disproving all the other flavors of Gatorade. Number one, Fruit Punch. Is that the best you can come up with, Gatorade? Number two, Lemon Lime. We all know what Lemon Lime actually reminds us of. Like I said, Glacier Cherry. Not fooling anyone with that one. Light blue Arctic Bliss. That's the flavor I'm going with, Sean. The main issue I have with light blue is that your mouth is going to be stained blue for the next what? three years after you have any sort of Gatorade. And I'm going to come at you with the hot take of the year. 
the best flavor of Gatorade isn't a Gatorade because Body Armor is 10 Whoa. times better than Whoa. any flavor of Gatorade. Give me Body Armor. The amount of flavors that Body Armor has compared to Gatorade. First of all, Body Armor is way lighter. Huh. I just Body Armors are just so much better. You have Strawberry Banana, Blackout Berry, Berry Lemonade, Pineapple Coconut. Are you kidding me? Who doesn't want a Pineapple Coconut just coating Getting the electrolytes back in your body, <laughs> replenishing yourself with a fantastic body armor. Give me body armor all day, any day. Way better than anything Gatorade could ever come up with. Hold on, Sean. Hold on, Sean. Refutation number one. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. Reputation, refutation number two. Let's see if body armor can withstand the test of time because Gatorade has. They've been doing it, and they've been doing it at the top of the industry for decades. Yeah, but Body Armor is doing it better than Gatorade. I don't know. Drink That's... Body Armor. Hashtag Drink Body Armor. Get it going. Body Armor. Far superior to anything that Gatorade can come up with. I'll leave it at that. I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. Well, that's going to include it for the first three topics of the day. We are bringing back one of our favorites. It is time for the topic of shout outs. This is our weekly shout outs where we shout out something random that we love to see in the sports world. Sean, do you want to start us off today with your shout out? My shout out of the week is going to fantasy football. Nothing says you're back in football season like screaming for Josh Jacobs to run and get some touchdowns. I hate the Raiders personally, but I really love my fantasy football team. Doing it at work, $25 buy-in. I need Josh Jacobs to step up and do better. He only got me about 12 points. I need that. But it's great to have fantasy <laughs> football back. Nothing gets you focused in on games you sometimes really don't care about or rooting for teams that you really don't like. For example, the Las Vegas Raiders. Gross. Disgusting. The one Monday Night Football made me very sad. But what made me even more sad is my fantasy football team lost. Mm. There's always another no, week, though. Surprise, surprise. Okay, okay. What's your shout-out? What's your shout-out? <laughs> My shout-out today goes to random guy on Twitter, Brian Campbell, a Pittsburgh Steelers fan who uh, tweeted at the Browns after their loss uh, this past weekend asking if he could get a free jersey from the Browns for Owen. Uh, Owen who? We'd, we'd assume that this is an underprivileged kid who just wants a jersey. Browns say, okay, let's do it. And they say, Owen who? And then Brian Campbell responds with, Owen won. Let's go Steelers. Though I don't agree with the sentiment, I love the roast. Terrific troll. The only problem was, turns out the whole tweet was fake. It was Photoshopped. Oh. However, Is however, everything? you got to love the creativity. You got to love the cleverness, the you're wit. You're telling me everything on the internet isn't real? Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Oh. Usually oh. It's, it's all right. Man, Twitter lied to me. Who would have thought? Yeah. But we didn't lie to you tonight, though. <laughs> we told the truth. We and told the truth. Nothing but the truth. That's right. Matt and Sean, we know. We just know. Thanks All for right. watching, sports fans. Great to have you back for another season of Cross the Lines. We'll be back next Wednesday. Hope you will be as well. Shout outs. Peace.